Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Okay, in this one we're going to be changing the firmware on the hoverboard motherboard. So, firstly, you just got to take it all apart, obviously. I mean, I was going to tell you how to do this, but chances are, if you're watching this video, you've already taken one apart. So, anyway, if you haven't, just make sure that you um, unplug the cables carefully. Some of the ones on the board can be a bit tight, so don't worry if you have to use pliers, it's better than trying to rip them out. Um, ideally, you want to be taking out the battery connection first, just so there's no power. Um, this is just to reduce any risk of touching the screwdriver on the circuit board or accidentally switching it on and something like that. So we have to disconnect the side parts, disconnect all the cables, um, pretty much everything, because we're going to have to be taking the motherboard out of the chassis. So there's quite a lot of cables. Easiest way is probably pull through, I'd say the motor cable first, and then, I don't know, whichever one works for you, just go for it. I mean, I've, I've seen some people um, soldering header pins from the top of the board, but it's a bit risky. Like you probably got to do, well, I don't know, you, you might be able to do all four pins at the same time, but um, there's not going to be much pin sticking out because it's going to have solder on it. So, I, I don't know, if you're really good, you could probably get away with it, but I don't want to risk it. So, this is what we're doing here. We're taking out the motherboard. Um, again, there's another different way of doing it. You can either undo all these four, eight, 12 screws, or there are four other screws on the main heatsink part. Um, some hoverboard, uh, motherboard heatsinks, they've got a hole in the back, but some of them are just a solid plate. So if you've got one with a hole in the back, then you can solder the pins on without having to separate it from the heatsink. Okay, so those are the four pins. These are the ones that we have to solder stuff to. So also remember holding the board in this orientation so the long flat bits at the top, and then we're going just um, left and down a bit from the main chip. Okay, so these are also the header pins. Uh, they should just fit in nicely. Um, there is a possibility that these holes are soldered up, and you have to heat up and remove all the solder before you can fit in the header pins. But luckily for us, this one, the holes were already there. Okay, so just soldering as usual. The pins were a little bit tight, so I kind of held it in place. So just be careful not to accidentally touch other bits. But you just want to make sure you got a good connection on all four. Okay, so that's good enough. Right, so these are four pins. And, yep, there they are. Right, so this is your wiring. Um, these numbers and letters, they match up to the ST-Link device that we'll be connecting it to. So those pins, as they go down, match up with the wiring diagram. Okay, so looking at the, the ST-Link, you got the four connections from pins two, four, six, and eight and they all match up to how they are on the motherboard here. So it's up to you, you know, you can use the same color wires. Um, just remember the 3.3 volts, that's, um, that's what goes through on the motherboard. If you put five through it, you're going to break it. <coughs> so remembering as well, the 3.3 volts, that's also um, what you have to use for inputs as well. So if you're using potentiometers, um, that kind of thing, it's always got to be 3.3. Right, so that's with it connected. And when you see the noise, well, when you hear the noises, you know it's working. Right, so software as well, you got to go into the ST-Link website and download the STM32 Cube Programmer software. I mean, it's, it's quite easy, it's free. 
Um, you just gotta find it. All right, so this is the software. All right, we try and connect, and uh, nothing's connected just yet. I haven't plugged it in. Um, right, so it's all reconnected, okay, and there we go. Right, so we're connected up, but the firmware is still locked, so we can't actually read any data off it, unfortunately. Um, there are other ways of doing this, but this is probably the easiest way I've found. Right, so we click on one of these on the side. Okay, so that's not the right one. Okay, here we go. Right, so now we've got different options we can do. So read out protection, uncheck that box, and then apply. So that's like, it, it's really, really easy. Easier than you'd expect. So now if we go back to try and load it, um, disconnect, reconnect, we'll have a lot more information about it. Okay. So this is like some information about um, the firmware. I, I, I don't know what all this stuff means. Um, but what we're going to do, we've got these other firmware files, which I'm going to link to in the description. Um, and then what we do, we just upload the firmware and, and it runs differently. So there we go. And that's it, that's uploading. And upload complete. So it's that easy. Now that's all you got to do to upload the new firmware. Um, trying to do well, trying to do all the controls and everything, and customizing the firmware or using different types of well, not different types, um, different versions of the firmware. It's it's a little bit too much for just this one video. So what I'm going to do this is going to be part one, and the next part I'm going to show you how to use different inputs to control the motors. Um, the one I've used so far is using digital analog converters to replicate a potentiometer and have that coming from an Arduino, which we can map out exactly to how we want it. So thanks for watching and subscribe to see the next one.